Jackson and to all the other ministers that are present today and to each of you, the father's children, we greet you in that wonderful and that magnificent name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Yes, no man. It won't be long today. It won't be long. I want to invite your attention to the book of Revelation. Amen. Revelation chapter 2 yeah. and the verses are 1 through 5. And I am at standard to be giving reverence to the reading of the word of God. Five minutes say, I got it. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars of his right hand and walks among the seven golden light bearers and stands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your resumes. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men. And you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name, and have not grown with them. Yet I hold this submission. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height in which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In a few minutes, I will talk on the subject of three old years ago. The text is uh, <coughs> taken from the book of Revelation. Pay you close attention to verse 4. Verse 4 says, I have this against you. That you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen. Repent and do the work you be here at first. Amen. The King James Version says, nevertheless, uh, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. But the book of Revelation is more correctly called the Revelation of St. John the Divine. Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 reads, The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must come shortly come to pass. And he said and signified it by his servant John, who bore record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of Jesus Christ and of all things that we saw. So in reality, it's a revelation that has been given to John. Uh -huh. And not only was it a revelation given to John, but it was a re revelation with a mission. Yeah. yeah, there was a mission attached to this revelation. Uh -huh. Verse 10, and y'all familiar with verse 10, and it reads, I was in the spirit of the Lord's day heard behind me a great voice as of the trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book, yeah. and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Mm -hmm. So John's mission was to deliver these messages to the angels, or to the pastors, of, or to the leaders of the seven churches. Uh, you know, I get to the speak impression that John was not to edit 
the letters. <laughs> he was not to critique the letters. He was not to decide which letters uh, should be sent and which letters would be too hard on the churches. He, he was not going kind of to deliver some of them and throw some of them out. He was simply to deliver the messages as they were given to him yeah, yeah. by God. Yes. And, and brother preachers, I just believe that our assignment as preachers of the gospel is simply to deliver the whole word of God. Yeah. It's the whole truth. Not to eliminate the parts that are hard to swallow. Yeah. Not to eliminate the parts that step on our feet. Yeah. Not to eliminate the parts that speak to our own sin. And not to eliminate the parts that are unpopular Amen. To the ears of unrepentant sinners. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. But like John the Revelator, we are to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. The whole truth. Yeah. And nothing but the truth. Yeah. Our mission comes with clear instructions. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you today that if we are obedient, guess what? Our churches will be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. No matter how hard the word of God is, I'm, I'm obligated to be obedient yes. to what God has given me to preach. Yes. But here in Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, the word says, Blessed are those who read aloud the word of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it. Yes, sir. We are simply to deliver the word of God as the Bible gives it to us. Yes, sir. So let's look at the first of these messages that John was to deliver to these churches. Ephesus was the Orthodox church, mm -hmm. meaning that this church conformed to established doctrine, meaning that this church was a conventional church. It might have been a conservative church church. Uh -huh. and, and the church of Ephesus, like a lot of other churches today, they overemphasize tradition. Uh -huh. That is, they were steep in tradition, yeah. but they lacked spiritual fire. Amen. Amen. Come on, Amen. They, they were more concerned about tradition than they were about the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. They were more concerned about the order of worship well, than the move of the Holy Spirit doing the worship. Yes, and I want to suggest that churches that are more traditional than they are spiritual cannot be churches that make a difference. Amen. Yes, if our churches are going to make a difference, the Holy Spirit must be our leader yes. and our guide. Yes, 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 the Holy Spirit must be the power source of the church. And I'm not talking about simply giving you the power to dance or to speak in tongues. Because guess what, Jim? I've been around the church all my life. And I know that we can do that on our own. Without the power of the Holy Spirit. We, we got to allow the Holy Spirit to send in the preacher. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to select the music. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to play the instruments. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to direct the choir. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to usher on the door. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to be the head of the deacon board and every auxiliary in the church. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to preach the word of God. In other words, I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit got to come in and take control. The, the church at Ephesus was, was the traditional church, steeped in tradition. And the message that the Lord gave John on the Isle of Patmos for the church at Ephesus, like the other churches, it was a twofold message. For each of the churches, there were commendations, commendations, and then there were rebukes. In other words, these messages show us that there's some good in the worst of us and some bad in the best of us. And so no church is perfect. Amen. Rising star ain't perfect. Mount Moriah ain't perfect. Amen. And as long as you and I are in this church, it won't be perfect. Amen. 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 Amen.
that's why we are the church militant. Yeah. But when the bridegroom comes back to receive the bride, then the church is going to be a church without spots or blemishes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and unlike the other churches, with the exception of the church of Laodicea, this church was commended for her good works. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, 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 the word says, I know thy works and thy labor, thy labor. and thy patience. Yeah. Now, I know how you cannot bear with them which are evil and how thou hast tried them which say that they are apostles and not how, how thou hast found them liars and hast borne and had patience and for my name's sake and you've labored and, and hasn't fainted yet. Yeah. Oh, I hear somebody saying, well, if the church is doing all of that, yeah. what could possibly be wrong with that church? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They seem to be fighting evil on every hand. Yeah. Yeah. They have been vocal in their opposition to false prophets. Mm -hmm. They have been steadfast, yeah. unmovable, yeah. always abounding in the word of the Lord. Yeah. They came to church. They paid their tithes. What more could the Lord want? Yeah. Yeah. They had been steadfast in their Christian duty. Yeah. Everybody held their office well. They had been patient under trial and persecution. Yeah. Yeah. Their the discipline had been pure, and the Bible says they hated evil. Yeah. 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 So we know they was not a bad church. Yeah. Yeah. They were loyal. Yeah. Uh -huh. Loyal church. Yeah. Faithful church. Yeah. So the question comes, what more could the Lord expect from them? Uh -huh. but, but even with all of that, there's still some condemnation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the Lord wants more. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care what you've done. Yeah. God always yeah. wants more. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know the Lord has high standards for his church? Yes, sir. Yeah. And so what he does is he criticizes them. After he commends them, he rebukes them. Yeah. Verse 4 shows us the rebuke of the Lord for this church. Look at look here. In, in the King James, the letter reads, Nevertheless. Yeah. Let the church say, Nevertheless. Yeah. Nevertheless. That's a, a contravening conjunction. Yeah. That, that never, nevertheless canceled out all the good work that they had done before. Yes. Yeah. Nevertheless, I got somewhat against you because thou has left your first love, your chief love. You left the basic component that makes you a church. You moved away from that which gave you power. You turned your backs on that which is essential. You, you have misdirected uh, your priorities. You have left your first love. Now look at this carefully. Look at this carefully. He does not dispute their sincerity. Well, mm -hmm. he does not dispute their love. No, no. But he proves them for the diminishing of their love. That's right. yeah. mm -hmm. yes, sir. In other words, the Lord is saying to them, I, I know you still love me, but the thrill is gone. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. You love me. Yeah. You've been faithful. Yes, yeah. But the thrill is gone. You don't love me. Huh. The way you used to love me. Like you used to love me. In other words, you love me, but you ain't in love with me. You know, it's sort of like the difference in a honeymoon relationship and then 10, 15 years down the road. Anybody here remember the honeymoon? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. On, on a honeymoon, the couple can't get enough yeah. of each other. Uh, right. I remember Pastor Clyde, Clyde Kelly. <coughs> Clyde, he tell, tells me the story about when he got married, how happy he was and his dad. I said, boy, you're really happy. He said, yes, sir. He said, you're so happy you could just eat up. 
He said, yes, sir. He said, well, one of these days, you're going to wish you had <laughs> yeah. Now, honey, Y'all remember, y'all remember. At first, there was a lot of attention being paid to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, that's that's what a honeymoon is all about. You just got married and you want to be on your best. Yeah. You want to do the right thing. You want to say the right thing. But after a few years, the couple started to get accustomed to one another. Look at somebody and say, don't get used to your spouse. Yeah, yeah, we get accustomed to one another. Y'all used to, uh, listen, y'all used to uh, each other now. Yeah. It's not new anymore. It's not as exciting anymore. I've done a lot of marriage counseling, and they have nerve to sit in front of me and say the fire. <laughs> no more breakfast in bed. No more roses. No more flowers. Just because. Listen. If she don't open the door of the car and get in herself, guess what? She don't get left. <laughs> Amen. But on the honeymoon, she don't open the door. You go around and open the door. And what's worse is that act that all too often the intimacy ceases. You might folk ain't got to say amen. I'm married too. Listen. Intimacy ceases because all the things that make intimacy happen, they cease. And y'all don't know that sex is not necessarily intimacy. Listen, there comes a time when you can just go through the motions. Listen, when you've been wooed, when you've been courted, and you've been made feel that you're the most important person in the world, yeah. when, when he, when this, this lady, when he makes you think that the whole world revolves around you, yes, sir. Yeah. and when you make him think that the whole world revolves around him, yes, that's intimacy. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Right. I'm talking about, listen, when he places you on a pedestal yeah. and yeah. make you feel like a queen, yeah. And you make him feel like a king. Yeah. That's intimacy. Yes, when you look for ways to make her happy, yeah. that, that's intimacy. Yeah. When she looks for ways to keep the flame burning, yeah. that's intimacy. Yeah. And that's what the church at Ephesus was guilty of. Listen, uh -huh. so you've left your first love. First love. Wow. Yeah. The Lord said, You love me. But you're not in love with me. Yes, they were married to the Lord. Yes, they were members of the church. Yes, they hated sin. Yes, they attended the worship regularly. Yes, they loved sound doctrine. Yes, they paid their tithes and offerings. Yes, they were a good church. But the angel said, nevertheless, because you have what? Left your first love. Y'all hear that? They were mad. But the thrill was gone. Listen, they don't they, they don't no longer court at each other. Being a part of the body of Christ had become a habit rather than a joy. They had left things that God that got God's attention. They had left the things that made God reach out to us. Perhaps they had begun to take the word and the Lord for granted yes, and the angel said right here in the letter uh -huh. nevertheless uh -huh. even though you've been zealous, even though you've been on the battlefield even though you've been steadfast nevertheless yeah, yeah. I got something against you Come on, man. because you've left your first love yes, sir. Come on, the Lord noticed the church's love had grown yeah. cold yeah. Yeah. They were not excited anymore. Come on, come on. You know, you can be a deacon so long, you just yeah. you lose all your enthusiasm about it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. You just holding the spot. Yes, you ain't excited no more. Yeah. All the fire and fervor have oh, left you. Yeah. Amen. They, they weren't anxious to worship anymore. Uh -huh. they, they took that attitude that I can take it 
for I can leave. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Used to be at the church every time the church goes over. Now you come when you get ready. Yeah. And then when you come up, when you come up in here late, you come up in here like you're doing God a favor by yeah. just being here. Yeah. Now look at that. In other words, the honeymoon is over. Yeah. And the Lord says, remember yes, sir. your first love. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what the Lord wants us to know this morning. He wants us to love him, serve him yes, sir. more than anybody, yeah. any place, or anything. And listen, listen, listen. I'm talking to the demons and all. Those of you who are officers and leaders in the church, that sometimes when the fire goes out, you got to learn how to stir the thing up and get the fire started back again. Listen, listen. Lady Pike can be my witness. When I was a young boy, Mama cooked our meals on an old-fashioned wood stove, uh, Esther. And, and when the fire began to go out in that old wood stove, Mama knew how to get the fire back burning again. Now, she wouldn't take a great big old log, Jimmy, and put it on the fire when it was almost gone out. But she would get some kindling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody in here know anything about some kindling wood? She'd get some kindling. Just some thin strips of wood as she throw them on the fire. Then she would get that old poke. Yeah. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. She get that old poke eye and she began to push yeah. and turn, push and turn until the fire began to burn all over again. Yeah. Listen, I got to go now. <laughs> But I just want to tell you that if the love, if your love has grown cold, you got to learn how to put some kidney on your fire. You got to go back and rekindle that fire. You got to renew that enthusiasm for the cause of righteousness. And this morning the Lord is saying, I die yet. To just come back. Yeah. I desire that you love me. Yeah. And that you turn around and go back. Yeah. Come back and refocus your priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you know what you need to do? You need to go back. Yeah. Remember your first love. Yeah. Go back and start singing like you love the love. Yeah. Yeah. Go back yeah. and start praying yeah. like you used to. Yeah. Start praying like you really love the love. 